How you doing? Today's a great Monday because you're going to get a two-parter. Maybe. I don't know. But uh, I'm here early before the gym because my gym partner wants to get here at 6 and I get here at 5. So whatever. I'm here because today is the first day of daylight savings time. Which means I can still see the sun right now. Which is kind of crazy. Second of all, it's... Wait... It, uh, it's gonna get darker soon which means that in the morning when I wake up for now at least I can see some sunlight I'm waking up faster and quicker when I open the window it is relatively bright out enough to wake your ass up for sure pardon my French now and I'm talking about donkeys because I have a donkey at the house and, you know, that's another term for donkey. Waking, you know, the donkey up. Now, that being said, it's going to be a crazy chest day. Absolutely divine. We're going to do fanta fantastic today. Now, when you have a bad day, you're going to keep going. Now, when you have a stressful day, you're going to keep going. You're going to keep pushing through, and eventually, it don't matter. Now, you should obviously do everything in moderation, of course. Don't go crazy, of course. However, being able to push yourself beyond the limits you think you're capable of is the most rewarding thing, probably as a species, that we do. It's all we do. It's all us as humans really do in this world is... We improvise, we figure stuff out, we do things we didn't think we were able to do. And that's going to the gym. That's doing things in the gym like crazy stuff. That's doing things at work that you didn't think you were capable of. Learning at work. A lot of people are closed off at their work. They're quiet quitting, you know. Part of my work is, is part of who I am. You know, I'm not just there to clock in and clock out and get my paycheck. And if you want to do that, that's great. But it's not a career, it's a job for you. And everyone hates their job. But their career, that's something special. So I'm here for the long run. I'm here for a career. So when I talk about my job and I talk about the gym, it's all a mindset. You can change your mindset on it. But get into a, a career where you feel like you're providing value and you're going to provide more value compounding over time. If you go to your job every day and feel like you're just clocking in and clocking out and you're not really learning anything, talking to anyone, doing anything, no wonder... No wonder you don't feel satisfied with your work. I mean, I don't know how old you are, but if you're my age at 21, I'm assuming you probably are not making enough money. And if you're not making enough money, you probably have a job. And even in your stage of this career, you probably aren't making a lot of money anyways in your career or your job, whatever you want to call it. The question is, what are you getting out of it? Because let's be real. First of all, you got to have a couple bills paid. I know you're not going to have everything. You either have to work OT, have savings, have very low cost of living where you're renting with like 20 other people in the same house or whatever. Or you're living with your parents or whatever. Or you have two jobs. You see what I mean? So those things make sense. They add up. You want to get to a point where you can have one job. You work 40 hours a week. You can own a house and you have a car. That right there is a life. Now, hopefully the house that you live in is not a bad area. I hope it would be a spot that you could raise kids in. Because that's an American dream, right? I want a house, I want a car, I want to raise kids in a nice neighborhood and have a good education for them, or at least decent public education in a nice county where there's stuff to do. That's it. The problem is, is I don't have enough capital right now to do that. So I have to be 
I have to be happy at my job or my career. I have to have value where I'm at. And I also have to have future value and future monetary value that I know will be coming to me in the future. You know? So you, you can't just think of it, everything as one dimensional. You, you can't just... Sorry, I don't know why, but my music just started playing. Uh, strange. Um, anyways, let's get back to it. Growing out the beard a little bit, not bad, not bad. If you see, I got a stash. I got this right here. I got the scruff trimming up the neck so I don't have a neck beard like those goob goobers. And then uh, got a nice thing right here. I'm blonde, so these hairs right here are blonde for now. But once they thicken up, uh, they, they actually have color. It just takes forever to come out. They come in white. And, uh, you know, my hair on top's nice little middle part going on. This is from the whole day at work, so it's kind of poofed out a little bit. But I, I look pretty fresh. Uh, my eyebrows are kind of crazy in this lighting. I don't know. I don't know what's going on with them. And, uh, obviously, my green's on point. Perfect. Cantle tilt. Oh. Anyways, uh, I don't know. I'm just messing around. I really don't have much to say right now. Uh, I know my best videos were when I first started. When I first started, I was talking about philosophy. The thing is, is I, I've run out of things to say. And Healthy Gamer GG is a great resource for some of this stuff. Whether it's psychology or... Um, or just mastering certain habits. The thing is, is he always talks about the same stuff. He, and quite honestly, a lot of his stuff is negative. It, it, healthy, healthy gamer GG is a great therapist, but he just talks about so much negative stuff. I just don't want to get into it. It's not a good mindset to have. I am a negative person already. I don't need him to tell me anything more about how, you know, certain systems are aligned where, you know, the, the male, you know, the male gaze or whatever, you know, the whole manosphere and everything. Oh, it's just too much. The election's going on soon. <clears throat> it's uh, Trump 2024 versus Kamala Harris 2024. That's pretty crazy. I don't know who you're voting for. I don't know if I'm voting for who I'm voting for either. Uh, if you know me, you know how I'm voting for, but I'll just keep it un undisclosed on here. It doesn't matter to me. And quite honestly, I don't even think I'm voting this year. Sorry, mom and dad. Uh, I just don't feel like it. It's just monotonous. I know it's my civic duty and everything or responsibility or privilege. I don't know, but, um, I don't know. I live in a town where I'm assuming my vote's going to go through either way. Um, the way the votes work out are based on county and city. Every region is separated into different chunks. And then those regions make up a system of points. And then those points get added up to see for each state. And then for each state, we figure out how many points each state has a value of in terms of population. And then that's factored up, too. Okay, well, um, you know, this is, this is who wins the presidency. So we'll see. I'm really excited to see what happens. I really am. But, um, you know, it doesn't matter. At the same time, stop watching the news. It's just... It's all just over-saturated. All they do, they just complain about the other party. It doesn't mean anything. You have one party saying this about the other person. You have one other party saying this about the other. It's like, even if you agree with one of them, you have to feel a little bit irritated. Hang on. I know I do. But, um, yeah, man, I'm just trying to figure some stuff out 
I'm going to try to get back into the philosophy side of these videos. I know most of mine have been just vlogs, kind of, which is not my intention. I, When I try to make these videos, I try to inform you. I try to teach you something. And the last couple weeks have been either sick or really busy. So my videos have really just been about my day and uh, reflecting on my day. And that's always going to be an aspect of my videos, but at the same time, I can't always teach you something. I, I haven't learned something that's relevant to you today. I could teach you about something at my job, but ugh, ugh. So, a lot of my stuff right now has been, con a lot of my job has been consuming me. In a decent way, like I've been learning, so that's good. But, um, I've been dreaming about my job, dreaming about the gym. It's all I do. I, I work, I go to the gym, I do a little bit of homework, and I pass out. And I watch a TV show. I burned through The Boys, Invincible, Gen V, and now we're working on Dexter because I've had five patients tell me to watch Dex Dexter. Can you imagine that? Dexter, a buddy cop show about a psychopath? That's crazy. But everyone's been telling me to watch it, so we're going to watch it. And honestly, I've watched it so far, and it's it's pretty crazy. Dude's a, dude's a menace to society. But, um, man, I'm lost for words right now. I think it's important... <coughs> Sorry. I think it's important to be self-aware. I know I've already told you all this stuff, but let me tell you again. You got to be self-aware at your job. You got to be self-aware at your work. You got to be self-aware at your career. When you're doing things in a social setting, you need to understand that your opinion or your truth is not 100%. I've always had that philosophy. I've always understood that, yes, well, I can be arrogant at times, I understand at the end of the day, I don't know everything. And when people perceive you as that or perceive you as stuck in your ways, it, the, the problem is, is you need to keep an open mind. And that's not just an open mind for others. That's an open mind for yourself. You are capable of learning more. And quite honestly, it's your only good trait as a human. If you cannot learn on the spot, and problem solve, then you are useless. You need to be able to problem solve, figure some stuff out, and have some confidence, and learn a little bit of information, so that tomorrow you know a little bit more. This is why people in careers, uh, you'll have like a handful of people that have no idea how to do their job, and not only do they not know how to do their job, they don't know how to do anyone else's. And you have one guy at the job that is overworked. He works 80 hours a week. He knows everybody there. He knows everyone else's jobs. He can do 70% of anything you ask him. I don't know why. And he does 100% of everything within his job description. And you might be saying, why, why are you obsessing over this, man? Like, I know my generation is very much on the, you know, let's let's not go crazy on the jobs and stuff. Like, let's not be so work-focused. But quite honestly, what other value do you provide to the world? You're telling me that once a year you go to Paris and that's what you want to get out of life? You know, like, once a year you go to Paris and then the next year you go to Hawaii... And then, uh, you know, like you have one vacation a year and that's where you want to spend your life. Don't get me wrong. That vacation is going to be fun. I bet. But the majority of your life is on your career, is at your career. Like a lot of hours go into that. So if you're not getting value from it, if you're not learning from it, if you're not having fun at it, or even enjoying yourself slightly, that's your job. Like... That's all you do, and you don't care about it. You don't care if you get a raise or not. You don't care if you get a promotion. 
it's not even fun to you that's sad really it is you have to enjoy your career a little bit just a little when you clock in you shouldn't be ah oh. you're an idiot if you think that so I want you to learn every day I want you to problem solve and figure some stuff out and then at the end of the day be like yeah my boss kind of sucks but at the end of the day you know we work through it that's every boss and when you're at your career <clears throat> My whole philosophy around my whole life is I've been in positions of uh, authority in leadership and I've understood where problems lie in that. I understand there's a certain threshold where you become a leader and then you become a manager. And when you become a manager, something switches. You're not really a good leader anymore. You're a good manager and sometimes it's not necessarily the best thing. So I'm trying to be a good leader for the rest of my life and a good problem solver. And even when I become a manager, I stay who I am. You know what I mean? You don't want to lose who you are to it because sometimes people do. Or that was always who they were, I don't know. But never let the power get to your head because having control over other people it's a pretty powerful thing i mean like you know your their career their jobs are in your hands you know their raises are in your hands their promotions are in your hands their training is in your hands all of these things are your responsibility and you you better believe that you need to make sure that they're going to be all right with that they're gonna be okay. And you've gotta you've gotta work through that stuff. You've gotta train your people. It's a big responsibility. I get it. And I understand that probably can overwhelm some people sometimes and maybe they snap. Maybe they, you know, say something they shouldn't, or maybe they just you know, they change. And that's okay, I get it. I understand there's certain rules to being a manager, and I get that as well. Um, what I hope in the future is just to be a good one, to be a good manager, to be a good leader. Part of that is self-awareness, understanding how I talk to people and how they talk to me. And how can I fix their problems and, and uh, how I can fix problems for the company. And that's really all it is to it. I know that's really generalization and stuff. It's just I, I try to keep my work away from these videos and bring it to more of a larger audience and not be so specific. But, um, yeah. It was a good day. I can't wait to go home and watch a TV show. I'm going to be at EDC Orlando for this weekend. It's going to be Friday, Saturday, Sunday. It's going to be awesome. And um, I just can't wait. My headache is subsided, I guess. I've taken some crazy meds for it. Some Advil and stuff. I should probably take more, actually. I'm going to take more. But, um, yeah, I think we're chilling. What was I trying to say before, though? I don't know, I just, uh, I hope you have a good day. And, uh, you know. Little goodie bag right here of, uh, pills. Don't worry, I know each one of them. I know exactly what they are. Hang on, I got a spam call. I know what each one of them are because I know exactly which pill is which because I used to work as a, well in pharmacy for a vet clinic. I miss those days. I was... I was very busy back then. I've always been a busy person. 
But all of that stress I kind of put on myself hardened me into the person I am today. I think a, a lot of that stress was put on by my parents as well. But it's made me who I am. I can I don't break under pressure at this point. I'm able to learn things a lot quicker. And I have a huge fountain of knowledge that can be tapped into at any time. I make jokes from it. I inform people of things about the world at all times. I may not know about the next celebrity's baby or who got married last week, but I know important information. If you have anything about veterinary or a hospital, I could probably tell you. If you want to know about Chick-fil-A, I could tell you I work back a house. You want to learn about fine dining? I've worked as a prep cook and a dishwasher at a fine dining restaurant. I know how to make all that stuff. Fun fact, it's all easy. It's high quantity and then they make it pretty. That's it. So next time you charge, or next time you go over to Chroma in Lake Nona, next to Orlando International Airport, and you get three deviled egg slices for $15, I'm watching you. I'm watching you. Anyways, uh, don't waste your money on food. Seriously. These gourmet restaurants are making crazy amounts off of you. You don't need to do that. I will take my spouse to Chili's on our 20th anniversary if that's our place. If we like eating at Chili's, we are going to Chili's. We're going to get that two for 20. I do not care. Actually, I want to find somebody that does want to do that with me, that does have that same mindset. Because at the end of the day, if I'm paying anything more than 20 bucks for a plate of food, ugh, why? That better be some crazy diabolical food. Because guess what? China Buffet, or uh, Buffet City if you want to call it, right over here, it might be like 8, 12 bucks for all you can eat food. I can get everything hibachi that I want, seafood, uh, you know, crab, uh, shrimp, chicken, pork, steak, every sauce imaginable, garlic, a ton of vegetables, any kind of carb, we're talking rice, rice noodle, lo mein, whatever you want, all the vegetables in the world has flavorings, you know, you got onions, mushrooms, things like that. You have all of these toppings. Then you can go over here, get some sushi. The sushi is pretty good. Is it the best sushi you'll ever have in your life? Probably not, but every time I've had it, it's tasted fresh and good. And it's a piece of fish over some rice. I don't care how expensive your fish is, it is not worth the price. Anything more than 12 bucks, for all you can eat over here. I'd rather do that three times a month than once a year over in Japan or something. You know what I mean? So that is the cost differential that you have to look at. Now I'm getting into cost differentials. Oh my gosh. Anyways, besides the point. And then you also have a bunch of other hot food over there and then you can get dessert. I love China Buffet. Actually, when I get married, that might be... That might be our, not, not, not married, um, let's just say if I took you on a first date and we went over to Chinese Buffet and you, you mess with me like that and we're going, we're going back round two, I said, Hey, uh, for our next date, you want to come back here? He says, yeah, bet. Let's go walk the lake front, walk this off and, uh. I'll see you next time. That's what I'm talking about right there. All right? I like that. We can get Chinese takeout too. It don't matter to me. All right? Cheap. I like cheap food. Cheap, healthy food. Not really healthy. But you get my point. I need to go to see these crazy restaurants because that's what it is. It's all status. I don't need status. Right? I don't need name brand clothes. Go on Amazon search up three pack of whatever you want to buy me and for 20 bucks get a three pack of pants instead of one pair of pants for me 
I would love that. You want to get me a pair of pants or uh, uh, some t-shirts? You know, get me a pack of them for the same price on Amazon and I can get six of them instead of one. And they're all different colors. I love utility. I love leveraging price. And it's not necessarily being a cheapskate. A lot of that leveraging has got me to a point where I have a lot of resources at my disposal. And yeah, I have paid a lot of money over the course of time, but I've also saved a lot of money. A lot of my impulsive purchases are well thought out things. Imagine buying a $20 cologne, not a Cavoyage, in the most economically efficient bottle size. After doing two months of research on colognes and finding the best one that is the best value in terms of um, price, right? I think I gotta get in the gym soon. Um, but what I'm saying is, is that I'm economically efficient, and I think you should be too. But anyways, I gotta pop into the gym here. My homie's probably popping up too. It's gonna be a crazy chest day. I might make another video with this. I'll have to see. Um, I'll probably have some more to talk about. Anyways, see ya.